um, happy 11-11 day. So today is November 11th, uh, 2019, if anybody got, you know, missed out on that or whatever. But it's also 11 um, o'clock at night at 11, well, 11-11 11, 11 as well. So it's a very uh, lucky number for wishes, hopes, and dreams. Um, so anyways, tonight, uh, I posted a, a picture earlier of three different ceramic bowls. So if you chose the color red, then this is, um, I'm going to choose a couple cards for you and it's going to be maybe some things that you should manifest during this particular full moon, uh, full moon in Taurus. So real quick before, um, I get into pulling some cards for some people and I'll just do like a quick shout out um, to them just saying their name before I pull some cards. Um, the first thing is is that anytime that we have a full moon it means that uh, the moon is in the opposite sign of wherever it is in the, the sun sign. So tonight we have a full moon, well tonight the sun is in Scorpio. So to have a full moon, it has to be in the exact opposite sign in Taurus. So the feelings of Taurus is a lot different than Scorpio. So like the Scorpio energy, um, hello, Victoria. Um, the Scorpio energy is an opposite energy to the Taurus energy. So typically, um, Scorpio energy can be kind of, uh, uh, well, actually, we'll, I'll start with explaining more of the Taurus energy. The Taurus energy is generally um, more loving, more open, and generally more, uh, you know, uh, interested in like tactile sensations, uh, interested in how they give their love to other people, how they show their love to other people. Um, how they make money and how they give gifts to each other. Hello. And in Scorpio, um, the moon is actually in fall in this position because um, typically it makes people be kind of secretive or worried about enemies or um, focus on maybe more of the negative aspects of life. Sometimes these people can be kind of pessimistic. So I think right now with all the energy that's in, um, yeah, and, and Scorpio rules like sensuality more in like a dangerous way, like, um, because it rules sex and rebirth and, um, kind of like overcoming try like struggles and stuff. And, um, Taurus is more about, uh, passions of the flesh, more sensuous nature, because it also rules Venus, whereas Scorpio is ruled by Mars. So there's also an opposition in this energy as well. So if you're using the full moon um, to manifest, you need to figure out where um, Taurus is in your particular chart so that you can know where to focus this particular energy um, tonight for the next, um, 30 days or so, but usually a full moon is where you're trying to, um, you know, harvest things. New moons are generally when you set intentions, but it's, it's a good time to kind of check that out too. So, um, I was going to play, let's see, a song by Harvey Sid Fisher tonight. Um, it's about, uh, Taurus. So I'm just going to play it real fast and hopefully you guys can hear it like in the background. Okay. It's like real cheesy. But I have like, I guess four people that, um, I have like readings to give, so. Talk about the 
bully bull bull. I want love, not stormy scenes, no tears and threats and throwing things. I don't like to be put upon, cause once I'm out the door, I'm gone. You be good, I love you to the end. And you will have a lover you can count on as a friend. Talk about the Taurus, talk about the bully bull bull. Talk about the Taurus, talk about the bully bull bull. Talk about the Taurus, talk about the bully bull bull. I stand on my own two feet, and what I start I will complete. Sometimes takes me long to learn to play with fire and not get burned. I'm not about going on status quo. I don't like the vote because I move and think so slow. Talk about the Taurus, talk about the bully bull bull. Talk about the Taurus, talk about the bully bull bull. Talk about the Taurus, talk about the bully bull bull. Talk about the Taurus, talk about the bully bull bull. Okay. So, um, yeah, I get that you were talking about um, sensuality, like when it comes to Scorpio. But both of them rule sensuality in different ways. So I would say um, with Scorpio, it's kind of this like all-encumbering, like very intense, uh, obsessive sexual energy. Like maybe the darker things that we explore, maybe um, you know, like fetishes and kinks and things like that. Um, but Taurus is more about. Um, sensuality like um on like a surface level it rules venus so it's more about like uh l l doing things compassionately like um maybe cooking like food for somebody or um you know making a bath for somebody and having roses like all over things they're a little bit more romantic but they like things a little bit more um in the physical yeah, so it's, um, Taurus is ruled by Venus, and it's also an Earth sign, so you have the combination of the two, like, uh, it prefers more tactile senses when it comes to Venus, like, like gifts, like foods, um, Taurus people generally like, uh, fabrics that are very soft and silky or sensuous. Um, you know, usually the color pink is like associated with Taurus as well. So, um, so I'm going to get on with the first person. So, hold on, let me stop this before it decides to play another one. So if you chose the color red, I'm going to do a quick reading, reading for you. So the first person is, um, Brittany Curl. Uh, she guessed red and she was the first person. So I'm just going to pull um, a couple cards for her and then I'm going to move on to um, Kirsten. Also pick the color red as well. So I'll be doing one for her as well. And, um, and I think I had one other person that also uh, picked the color red. But... I'm kind of trying to look at like people's pictures. I feel like I do a better job when I can like kind of look at their face um, while I'm trying to get like a reading from them. So I usually try to ask people to give me like a selfie or something. But um, yeah, try to stay warm out there. I know it's like a really, really chilly night in Dallas tonight. And I'm just going to try to get like some of these cards to kind of get going. Um, okay. What else? What is going on here for that? Okay, so I feel like maybe in the next 30 days or what she's currently going through, um, 
So we got four cards that fell out for you, Brittany. Um, the first card that fell out was the Fool card, and then it was followed by the King of Pentacles, and then the Queen of Wands, and the Lovers. So I feel like this is definitely a relationship reading. Um, uh, what I'm trying to get... I'm feeling with, um, these two cards came out together. So I was feeling like maybe at the beginning of, you know, this week or maybe last week, maybe right before the retrograde, there was an idea that, um, maybe there was a question as to whether or not this was the right partner for you, whether or not, um, maybe this person provided too much security and there was questions about whether or not, you know, this is a person that you could, uh, maybe trust or something. Um, I feel like there was some sort of argument that happened and I think that as time is going to go on, I think you're going to realize like how, um, passionate like this connection actually is and how much this person actually makes you feel like, um, so sensuous and like so, um, so beautiful. Like, I think they really make you feel like, um, this really passionate, sexy woman. And it, it's, it's really a change for once because I think they were so focused maybe on um, making money and, and doing all these things and it kind of shifts into being more of like a better partner for you. So I see that happening for you and I'm really stoked about that. Um, yeah, so I got this sweater at the thrift store earlier this week and it's actually Forever 21. So, you know, buy Forever 21. I'm sorry that you got shut down or whatever, but I like this $2 sweater that I got. It's pretty rad. Um, but yeah, let's see who else is here. Hey. All right. And then the next person is Kirsten De La Cruz. You also picked the color red. So I'm going to pull some cards for you. And I feel like there was another person that also picked red, so I'm going to get to them, like, right after this. I'm just kind of looking at their, their pictures real fast. Hmm. Okay. You have such beautiful eyes. I just wanted to say that. Okay, so I'm going to shuffle. And kind of the same thing if these cards fall out. Um, okay. Azari, I think, or Garcia, um, if you just go to the other one, well, I think it's already closed, otherwise I totally would do you, but I, I had it open and I just wanted to just pick like a couple people and, um, I feel like if people are usually on point with needing a reading, they, they pick the right color, so it makes it a little bit special, otherwise I totally would, but I'll do like a one card pull for you if you have a question that you want to ask real fast. I'll pull one to like kind of validate you. Ooh. Okay. So for you, Kirsten, um, you also got a lot of court cards, kind of like the previous reading. Um, so the first one that we have is uh, the Knight of Wands in reverse, followed by um, the Queen of Pentacles in reverse, the, um, the Emperor upright, and then also um, the Ten of Cups. So... The emotions that I'm kind of getting from this, um, and I'm wondering what this Emperor card is in particular, so I'm just going to pull a quick clarifier for it to see if something just kind of pops out in it. I feel like that's the card. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to place that in the front somewhere.
Okay, so this is interesting. Um, so I think lately you've been kind of trans, like it's, it's kind of a period where you have been changing from, um, maybe feeling like you were having some struggles with, um, you know, maintaining, uh, security like in your own life and kind of, uh, worry that you weren't going to be able to kind of be the emperor, like be a really strong key figure for other people, like in your life or a good partner for other people, because you felt like, um, you weren't able to maybe financially be supportive of someone else or be able to like hold on to your finances in a certain way. Um, but I see that those types of things are changing for you. So it's almost like a completely different, um, lifestyle kind of coming up for you because you're able to make more money and kind of mm, maintain new, but also like more friendships with the 10 of cups. Um, and I was saying, I was wondering if the emperor in particular was, uh, was somebody that was like a male figure in your life. But the truth is, is I think it's you. I think it's just you coming into like what, um, kind of like all the things that you had inside of yourself. Like you always knew that you could be kind of this responsible person, but you finally, with the, uh, with the Knave of Pentacles, you're finally able to m create this, this money or the security for yourself. So it's been a really big change and coming with it is the, um, nine of pence as well. So being able to kind of like spend money the way that you want to kind of live the life that you want to, and I think this has been a really big shock for you um, uh, because I feel like you've been like kind of chasing um, maybe a type of career or maybe a different type of way of making money and suddenly it's just been totally different. Um, but I don't feel like this is the influence of anybody else. I feel like this is actually you like changing these things. Um, and I think it's actually a really exciting time for you. All right. And I'm going to go back to that post and see if there was anybody else before I move on. And if you didn't, um, I guess make a comment on that one. Feel free to ask a really quick question on here and I'll pull a single card for you. Um, and I'll do that real fast. So anybody that wants um, to ask a question or something, feel free to do that and I will pull a card for you. Okay, and then there was one other person, um, her name is uh, Y.E., so I'm going to pull um, some cards for you as well, and then I'm probably going to wrap this up, but like I said before, if you have a question that you want to ask, um, hello, feel free to ask a question and I'll pull a single card for it. I'll just, like a simple uh, question that just to val validate like what you're feeling or something like that. All right. So this is for um, YA, I believe. I hope I'm saying it correctly. So I'm just shuffling and I'm just gonna pull a couple cards for you. Okay, um, okay, so I feel like, I feel like 
so the cards that we got for this particular reading um, for you, um, w the first card that came up was the Five of Wands, followed by the Five of Pentacles in reverse, the Eight of Cups, and then the Ace of Wands. So here's all of those cards. Um, I'm trying to kind of fit all of those, all those cards put together. Um, so I'm thinking this is a situation where I think that you're actually making a move. Um, there's a situation that's coming up that I think you're having some issues with um, maintaining the space in which um, you live at. And I think that you've been thinking about how it's been time to um, make that move. And I think that there's a lot of anxiety about like coming up to the new, um, that new chapter in your life. Um, with the nine of swords and then also the, the 10 of, uh, like the wheel. So there's a lot of change going on. And I think that, um, you might be moving kind of a long distance to reconnect. Um, maybe with, um, I was thinking a family member, but I think it's actually going to be a friend. So six of coins also with, um, the, uh, king of swords in reverse. So somebody that you definitely know from the past, um, somebody that um, wants to help out, but I think with the King of Swords, um, um, another vibe also with this particular person might have been somebody that you might have um, dated in the past, or there might be some flirtations with this person that are kind of unclear, and it's going to bring up um, some other feelings, I think, with this person. Um, so that's something also to kind of think about, I think, when within this particular month. Um, will this transition be smooth? Um, I think that your friends are definitely going to help you out, but I do think that there are going to be um, some hiccups along the way with the Knight of Swords, or the Knave of Swords. Um, maybe some uh, ideas or communications that weren't kind of clear, that need to become clear uh, during this period. Um, but I think that everybody's on your side. What are you thinking of? Um, no, but I think everything will end up being resolved. But um, just kind of keep some of those things in mind. All right, um, all right, so I was, did you have a, Aziri, did you have a question that you wanted to ask before I close this out? It's just like quick reading for, um, for uh, Full Moon and Taurus. All right. <laughs> okay, well, thank you so much, everybody, for watching. Uh, I hope everybody has a great, um, 11, 11, and that, you know, you put, uh, that wish out there. So, um, enjoy this full moon in Taurus tonight. Um, you know, experience some, maybe make some really good food at home or something like that, or, um, enjoy a bath or something like that. I think that would be really good to kind of reflect on this full moon. Um, maybe put on some sheet masks or something. Uh, pamper yourself. I think it would be really nice to do. All right. Well, anyways, thank you so much. And if you have any questions about, um, you know, where Taurus sits in your personal natal chart or how you can manifest things better for yourself, uh, feel free to hit me up and I will help you uh, with a natal chart to kind of explain like where that uh, fits in um, or even make plans for uh, the next new moon in Sagittarius. All right. Well, anyways, thank you so much. Uh, I hope everybody has a really great night and everybody stays warm. Thank you so much for viewing. Hey, Winston. All right. Bye.